first at four, a teenager turns himself into police. Investigators are describing a family tragedy. We've got the latest information. And get ready for the new normal. Most of Michigan's COVID restrictions will be removed tomorrow. So we are going to talk about what you need to know. Plus, Paul is talking to some local business owners. It's the teenage girl who's the first to save businesses from COVID. Pent up demand, proms, even weddings are making a swift and strong comeback. Oh, and in the nick of time. Clouds are menacing with some pretty strong winds. So are we in for another round of rain as temperatures continue to cool? We'll check it out for you right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and click on Detroit. Local four news first at four starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. You're watching First at Four. Investigators describing a family tragedy over in Brighton. We've been on the scene for a few hours now. Investigators say a teenager is in custody after shooting his father to death. Police were called to this home this morning. So far, we don't have any information on what exactly led to the shooting. We are told the young man is in custody after turning himself in. We've got a crew in Brighton now gathering the very latest information. You'll hear more when you join us tonight at 5. New surveillance video showing the moment that a father, his 11-year-old son, and another man were hit by bullets on Detroit's west side. The shootings happened at about 8 o'clock in the morning on Father's Day on St. Mary's near Plymouth Road and Greenfield. Police say the three victims were just sitting inside a Chevy Suburban when the driver of the black Chrysler 300 pulled up next to them. And shortly afterward, a person got out of the passenger side of that Chrysler with a gun and fired multiple shots at the victims. All three are in stable condition this afternoon. Contact police if you happen to know anything about this case. Michigan's reopening is coming sooner than expected. Most COVID restrictions are set to expire tomorrow. That date moved up from July 1st. It is a very big step toward a new normal. Capacity limits will increase to 100% indoors and outdoors. Face masks will no longer be required by the state, but there is some wiggle room there. And the state's vaccination rate is still hovering just above the 60%, well below the goal of 70% by July 4th. The change comes as Michigan's case rates and hospitalizations have plummeted over the past several weeks. Today, the very latest, the seven day case positivity rate is now below 1.5%. The state just reported 327 new cases and 35 additional deaths. That's over the past three days. When it comes to face masks, the state is dropping its requirements, but private businesses can still put their own policies in place to protect employees and customers. Today, Canada announced it will ease travel restrictions for fully vaccinated Canadian citizens and permanent residents. They will be allowed to cross the border without quarantining starting July 5th. Now, right now, it seems there's no change for U.S. citizens. And these changes arrive. Governor Whitmer tells reporters more people still need to get vaccinated. To people who have not yet gotten vaccinated, please do get your questions answered. But these vaccinations really are the key to getting back to normal. And we've made great strides and we want to keep doing that. The governor spoke to reporters after a groundbreaking for a new manufacturing site in Walker, Michigan, on the western side of the state. It is expected to bring 164 new jobs and a $64 million capital investment. In terms of the post-COVID economy for local small businesses, you might consider bridal salons and dress shops the proverbial canaries in a coal mine. A quick about face on proms this year meant teenage girls were really some of the first in line with money burning their pockets. Paula Topman joins us this afternoon with a closer look at some early signs of a business comeback that is bringing a lot of smiles for everyone involved, Paula. Hey, Karen, well, hold on to your boots because I've got some numbers that are going to knock your socks off. According to the National Retail Federation, it is projecting that the retail and online numbers for 2021 as the economy reopens. Remember, we're already halfway through the year, but they believe those numbers are going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.6 trillion dollars. Now, put that next to last year's COVID numbers for the entire year. It was only $4 trillion, still a whole lot of cheddar, but no matter how you cut it, it is the teenage girl that appears to be leading the charge card. This is what the American dream looks like. Beautiful. 
Iris of Ferndale fashions. Look how beautiful you are. One woman, a talent, perseverance, and good luck. For Linda Awatam, who fled Iraq in the 70s because, as a Christian Iraqi or Chaldean, she was persecuted for her religious beliefs, building a bridal salon and dress shop in Ferndale allowed her to survive and thrive. In an average prom season, she sold a minimum of 200 off-the-rack and custom dresses. I used to have a customer standing outside to just to, to get to the store. But then COVID struck. COVID killed everything. I mean, you imagine a special occasion boutique with all the high schools being shut down, with all the wedding venues being shut down. There was nothing we could do. I cry every day just to get business. The only reason she believes she survived was because she owned her own building and couldn't be evicted. There are other renters in her buildings that she wasn't collecting rent for. So yeah, everything did end up coming up less than zero because she was she still had expenses that she had to fulfill, but she wasn't getting any profit or any income. The business is coming back, perhaps not with a roar, but certainly with a rumble. There is literally one person mm -hmm. that I'm going to, I don't even live in the state anymore. Wow. And I called her and I said, will you be available? I'm going to be in town for four days. I only trust you to actually Dress. The same story for Rayshawn Bumfers of Pink Poodle Dress Shop in Detroit. So the brides from last year that moved their wedding to this year, we're doing their alterations on top of brides that planned it for 2021 as well as prom. And then prom happened so fast. They were told, you know, kind of the last minute that they could, they were having prom. So the girls started running in the doors. What these businesses are noticing is not just the windfall of pent up demand, but backspending money that wasn't spent during COVID, oftentimes being spent on top of current purchases as customers upsell themselves. It's so beneficial to us. We need this because we missed out when the restaurants and venues were closed. It's just beautiful to see her get back into it with all the time and effort she's put into the community and building her business after all of this time and the legacy that she's created. And it's also beautiful to see the community as a whole coming together to be able to celebrate this momentum events against and to, to really have this joy out in the world. Yeah, you know what, Karen? Uh, economics, pent up demand is a real thing. People money burning their pockets because they couldn't spend it. They made more money. They were able to save it and now they're ready to spend it. Shout out to those teenage girls and the brides to be. Thank you, Paula. Right? Yeah, exactly. great story. <laughs> All right, well, many of you probably heard those storms that were roaring through Metro Detroit overnight and you might have actually lost some power or maybe you woke up to this. Look at this damage. We found this big tree snapped in half over in Harrison Township on South River Road. It fell onto a home, knocked down some power lines. Now, luckily, no one was hurt. We are told the power has been restored in that area. Too much rain too quickly led to scenes like this on some interstates and local roads. Sky 4 flew over the ramps from north and southbound 75 to eastbound, eastbound 94. You can see several cars and trucks driving through some of that standing water just before 7 this morning. Now those problems are gone, but since this morning we have seen some sunshine in downtown Detroit, giving many of us a chance to dry out. Let's bring in Ben Bailey for a look at how we're doing right now. Not as warm as I was hoping, Ben. No, we are definitely cooling down compared to where we've been for the last several days. In fact, numbers are now down into the 60s in some spots. We're barely holding on to 70 and others. And you can see that those winds now sustained uh, out of the northwest 26 miles an hour. Guster topping 30 and getting close to 40 miles per hour in a couple spots. Now, Storm Tracker 4, you saw those clouds there over Ann Arbor. Uh, that's that area that's been coming out of Lansing. You can see that the actual moisture is drying up as it heads into our west zone. So very small chance, very slim shot that there'll be a sprinkle uh, for the rest of the afternoon. Otherwise, we're looking for dry conditions tonight and clearing skies. Look at those lows, 47 waking up tomorrow morning, and it will be with plenty of sunshine, so we'll get that back, but we'll talk about when the heat and humidity return in just a few minutes. Karen? All right, thank you, Ben. Other parts of the Midwest got hit much harder than we did. This video coming from suburban Chicago. A tornado just swept through the city of Naperville. Severe weather has been causing problems all around the country for a few days. Kimberly Gill following the latest for us. And obviously this kind of video is just heartbreaking, Kim, to see. It is, and Karen, good afternoon to you. We should never forget that 
All of the damage we're about to show you is connected to families and communities that now face massive cleanup efforts and in some cases the loss of life as well. The area surrounding Naperville, Illinois, as you said, is devastated after a tornado ripped through a heavily populated residential area there. Dozens of homes are damaged with Nearly 20 homes already determined to be uninhabitable. Utility poles have been ripped out, electrical wires torn down, and trees snapped. Some gas lines were also broken, forcing crews to go door to door to turn the gas off. Police say early warnings were set off and likely minimized the number of injuries. A handful of people were taken to hospitals. One resident describes the power of the storm. Listen. You could hear, feel the house, you know, shaking, but you can hear the winds just hitting the house and just like a freight train hitting the house. So, uh, you know, the house was the house was moving. Residents in the southeast are also dealing in, or in the middle of a disaster. They are dealing with disaster after a tornado ripped through Alabama. The impact of tropical storm Claudette killed at least 14 people, including nine children who died in a highway crash blamed on the storm. Claudette traveled from the Gulf Coast through several states before heading off into the Atlantic from North Carolina today. Karen, two very dangerous storm systems causing so much destruction. Our hearts certainly go out to everyone affected in all of this. This is all for now. We'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Obviously some tough news to report this afternoon. Thank you, Kim. Still ahead, first at four, a financial boost for student athletes, but Michigan players are still ahead of the curve. We're going to tell you why. Also, another sign it looks like the Summer Olympics will take place, but organizers are not following the advice of Japan's top medical expert. And later, if you've ever worked for General Motors, you're kind of part of Hollywood history, and now it's going to be official. We'll show you in Trending Stories. Could the return to normalcy be stressing your kids out? Tomorrow morning, Nick Monticelli reveals the signs your children are feeling anxious and how to help. That's tomorrow on Local 4 News.